Welcome to Absolutely Chemistry. I've decided to call this class that because that's what I call this class on the web where you will find all the lectures for this gathering available on YouTube. I unfortunately forgot to include the website information on the syllabus, so I wrote it there. Everybody get a syllabus for the lecture? If not, come get right now. If you're in 46L, also get a copy of the syllabus for the lab. If you don't have it, get it right now. There's a couple of stacks of the lab syllabi laying around here. Is Kyra Ann Forrest here? Please see me for a moment after our chat. See, if you see me for a moment after we talk. I can get you a new one of these things. You see me right after class, we'll get you a new book. My name is Horvath. I expect that many of you, if not all of you, already know that. It's usually the case that folks registered for my gathering are there on purpose because I have a reputation liked by some, not liked by others. Why? Because in this gathering, we're going to talk about chemistry. Real chemistry. Chemistry from the only perspective that chemistry or any version of science can be appreciated. Chemistry from an understanding standpoint. Where you will have to think all the time. Because by thinking, you will gain understanding, and by understanding, you will gain appreciation. And then, you can know what chemistry is all about. And that's what I want. And that's what we're going to strive to achieve. Now, some practical comments. First, regarding laboratory. I expect that most, if not all of you, have already taken first semester laboratory. So you know how we operate. But just as a reminder, laboratory classes start next week. This is the syllabus for 46L. I've told you with the note on the board that if you're in 46L, you, all are, you also should have picked up a syllabus for laboratory next week. Before your first laboratory class next week, I expect you to read this syllabus and read it carefully so you know the policies and politics by which the laboratory course operates. This is the laboratory manual. It's the third edition. You must have this in your possession when you attend the first laboratory class and each subsequent laboratory class. No laboratory manual, no admission to the laboratory. Because without the laboratory manual, you cannot do the work that the laboratory course calls for. Available at any local bookstore. Another comment on the syllabus. Notice, please, this paragraph that's just a short way down the front side of the syllabus that says, beginning the term, read carefully.
When you go to laboratory, you shall be expected to have answered. The first question in assignment one, which is a question on making solutions by dilution properly. You made solutions by dilution in 45L, and now we want you to be able to put that to use, particularly in regard to performing the first laboratory experiment correctly. So your obligation is to answer this question in indelible ink, because a laboratory manual is a book of record. You only erase entries in the laboratory manual. Not if you're functioning in laboratory properly, like a student of science is supposed to do. But the most important part of your response being an explanation of the mechanics of the dilution. What do you need to do to make this dilution properly? That's what your laboratory instructor, TA, will be looking for. Your TA will ask you to open your laboratory manual next week during your, during your first laboratory class while you are checking in. So that while you are checking in, your laboratory TA will look at your response to this question, decide if it's good enough to issue you an OK, which will allow you, give you permission to proceed with the experiment work. And if your response is not acceptable, you will not receive this OK until you make the response acceptable. Because your entire success in doing this first experiment in 46L depends on making dilutions correctly. So if you don't make the dilutions correctly, everything you do in the first experiment will be messed up. And we don't have time to give you the opportunity to do this work again. We don't have time to give you another laboratory class to repeat <coughs> this lost laboratory class because of not having done the experiment properly. But you know about this method of operation if you were in 45L with us last term because that was what we was re that method of operation was required of you for your activities in 45L. But unlike 45L, in 46L you will work on an individual basis. Period except that we will allow you to work in teams of two to make the solutions necessary for the experiment in assignment one simply because many solutions need to be made. But after that work, no more partnerships, individual basis, so we can find out how good you are. And we hope to find out that you're all excellent. It'll be your opportunity to show us that. Lecture. First, this is the textbook for this gathering. As I look around, I see some of you have this. That's good. By Friday's gathering, all of you must have this. Chem Notes 2, which I wrote, are the entire package of notes for this course. Why did I do this? So that when you folks come to this gathering, you will have the notes. You won't have to write notes. You won't have to take notes because you got the notes. Which gives us the opportunity during class, discussion class on Tuesday included, to explain the notes as necessary, to work problems that are in the notes to show you what this information means so that you'll be able to understand it. That's what we want. So if you haven't got the notes yet, get such. Available at any of the local bookstores. And if you want to have yourself best prepared for each class gathering, read ahead so that Prior to coming here, you will have already read over and thought about the information which we're going to discuss. And if you're concerned as to where we will be, 
if you do one of the requirements of this class, a requirement which you need to do if you want to be successful, and I want you all to be successful, which means attend every gathering, you'll always know where we're at. So, back to the syllabus. I will, after establishing CLC, which is out of class office support time for you folks, after I establish CLC duty times for our discussion instructors, we'll introduce to you all the discussion instructors this Friday at the start of class, and with good fortune at that time I will also have a CLC duty schedule that will also be posted on our class Sakai website. So that when you seek out of class help, and if you need out of class help, get it. It's there. You don't have to ask for it. You don't have to make appointments to see us during office time. That time belongs to you. And if you run into any faculty person at this university who indicates that he or she does not want to see you during scheduled office time, that's what you take to the president's office and complain about. Because you're being cheated. And you're not supposed to be cheated. Scheduled office time belongs to the student. Use it. Now, back to the syllabus. You know about the notes? I wrote the Absolutely Chemistry website, which is where you will be able to find the video audio recordings of all our class gatherings. There's also a collection of video audio recordings from my summer lectures. I'm going to have to work on those in order to provide a better indication of what the content of each lecture is about. I'll fix that as soon as I can. Nevertheless, there are videos there already should you wish to look at them, they start about halfway through chapter 18, the video presentations that are already on this website. All right. Now, regarding the notes, if I fail to mention this previously, let me mention it now. Not only are you obligated to have this note package, because it's our textbook, you need to bring this with you for every class. I know it's a little bit heavy, but there's a lot of times that we will refer to specific information that's in these notes, and I'm not going to take time to write it on the board, because if you are doing what I tell you to do, if you have the notes, you got it. And all you need to do is to open the notes to the page to which I am referring, and you'll see what it is that we're talking about. For example, working questions and problems. I don't want to write, take time to write the question or problem on the board, because it's already here. So if you got this, you're ready to go. This course schedule, notice that it says tentative. Because I can't say for sure where we're going to be on a day-by-day -day basis. Where we will be, will be to pick up from the tail end of the last lecture gathering with Tuesday's discussion classes being an integral part of these lecture gatherings because for the most part what will happen on Tuesdays is that our discussion instructors will function as an extension of what I do with you here in lecture class. Which tells you right away that's equally, it's just as important for you to be in discussion class as, as it is to be here. Because if you miss you're going to miss material. And what is it that I ask you about on quizzes and exams? It's what we do in class. And what's in the notes, that's the course. The class, the notes, that's the course, period. So, again, recognize that this topic outline is tentative. If you are with us in class all the time, which I want you to be, then you'll know where we're at. All right. Back side of the syllabus. Notice the short paragraph near the top of the second page, which 
has the caption instructor's request please recognize that I am more than willing to help any sincere student anybody who's trying to learn no matter how difficult it may be no matter how much you're struggling we'll be glad to work with you but do not approach me immediately before class because I'll always be in here writing notes on the board and I'll try to come in here with my noggin containing an organized collection of thoughts about what it is that I wish to discuss with you for that given class day and if you say something to me that puts me off course I'll get rattled and maybe mess up the discussion I'll maybe mess up the lecture and I don't want to do that so I ask please that in that immediate time before class you don't approach me for any reason now grading I expect that in your 2045 gathering you did business with a grading policy by which your lowest quiz grade your lowest exam grade were thrown away to me that's tantamount to saying that there's a certain body proper of material that doesn't matter I don't do that every graded event counts there's no throwing away quiz grades or exam grades never I don't do that but the other side of the coin is on each exam and quiz you will have the opportunity to earn an ample quantity of extra credit points points which contribute to your total number of accumulated points because the way I keep score the way I issue grades is as the syllabus says based strictly on total points no statistics no curves no percentages none of that stuff each person in this gathering will, will receive a grade as if he or she is the only student here if you excel you excel and I hope that you all excel and I'm gonna do everything I can to help you excel but of course you've got to do your part as a matter of fact the more A's I write on the registrar's scorecard at the end of the term the happier I am so with that I'm going to give you this task make me happy because in so doing you're going to make yourself happy and that's what we want and if everybody gets an A and the registrar complains I will ask the registrar to take my exams they will never complain again I guarantee now then the rest of this information speaks for itself read it and if you have questions about it please ask now before we proceed with actual chemistry I like to have a little fun because I know that most of you if not all of you have heard stories about me Horvath is a bastard don't be in his class I know this I'm a bastard because I expect you to think and understand hey that's what the university is all about if I ran this place the first thing I would do would be to function as the governor of enrollment and I would ask every student who intends to come to the University of Florida are you here to get a degree or are you here to get an education 
And everybody who would respond, I'm here to get a degree, you don't get in. Because if you get the education, you'll get the degree. But I know people with degrees who don't know squat. And that's a travesty, damn it. I know people with PhDs who don't know squat. That's terrible. What kind of an education did they receive? Nothing. They got a phony false reputation. And I don't stand for that kind of stuff. And so, Horvath is ridiculous. Avoid his class at all costs. He's off in his own world and speaks his own language that's nearly impossible to understand. But if you can get into his mind, then stay in his class. But for the other 90% of you, get out. <laughs> he makes you buy a book of his own notes. That's chem notes. Which are so confusing and don't help you at all learn chemistry. Next remark. If you're looking for an easy A, you're not going to get it. But if you really want to learn this stuff, then take his class. He knows the stuff, he's a genius, and his lectures are great. I don't know about the genius part, but I can tell you this. I will make every sincere effort to give you as much understanding as I can with each lecture. And one thing that I have to do in order to achieve this is to command your attention. I'll entertain you. I'll tell jokes. I'll tell stories. I'll jump up and down. I'll do any damn thing I need to do to keep you interested. Because if I present the material in an absolutely flawless and perfect fashion, like this, in about 10 minutes, you're all going to be asleep. <laughs> now, I can assure you, the way I boom, you're hearing it right now. A lot of things will happen in here, but sleeping isn't one of them. will teach me everything I need to know. <laughs> The greatest teacher you have is yourself, by far. Nobody can come close to teaching you as much as you can teach yourself. And nobody can teach you everything you need to know. Unless what it is that you feel you need to know is nothing. Then we can get there. But I'll strive as hard as I can to rise up to this commendation. I heard that no one can pass your class. That's the next series of comments. So with that I read you some statistics. This lecture class taught in spring 09, a few years back, 504 students began. I had two lecture sections. Out of the 504 that started, 421 finished. That's 83.5 percent. Out of the 421 that finished, 121 A's. That's 29 percent. If I add up the B's, B pluses and A's, because we didn't have minuses in 09, I got 253 students. That's 60 percent. 60 percent of that enrollment made B or better. And if I add in the C's and C pluses, it rises to 370. That's 88 percent of those that finished the class. 88 percent made C or better. 46 F11. That's the lecture from a year ago. 231 started, 176 finished. That's 76.2 percent. A30, 17 percent, which was the most common grade that I wrote on the scorecard. Just like for spring 09. Just like for every time I've taught this class, which is now about 30 times. Out of the 30 times I've taught this class, with but one exception, for those who complete the course, the most common grade I have always written on the registrar scorecard is, hey, I like that. So, 46 SP12, started 147, finished 133, 120 of the 140, 133 that finished made C or better. That's 90.5 percent. 41 of those were A's. That's 31 percent. 
by far the most common grade. So I take issue with this remark, no one can pass the class. I heard if you survived the painstaking torture of Horvath's class, you prepared for the hell of putting yourself through medical school. One of the pleasures I've had, frankly, is students for whom I've written letters of recommendation for medical school coming back to me after they've done business with this, what is this, MCAT, where you've got chemistry questions on there. They told me, these chemistry questions are nothing compared to yours. I zipped through that, thanks to you. Look up evil in the dictionary. <laughs> See Horvath. <laughs> Before I attended the first class, people told me Horvath was tough, rude, and a big jerk. One girl told me he took a copy of the book she had just bought and threw it across the room. That's a lie. I kicked it across the room. <laughs> and because of this one student complaining, the chair of our department, not the present chair, asked me, in fact, told me to discontinue kicking the book across the room. I said, why? That damn thing isn't worth anything more than a doorstop. It's junk. I'm not going to insult my students who really want to learn with that stuff. And you'll find out why as we proceed. So, the student goes on to say, after attending the first class, I began to see Horvath as hilarious and unique. Honestly, I don't understand why all these other folks said what they said. I started being very optimistic about my situation and believing that I can do this. He is Satan himself. <laughs> According to my sources, I've heard that Horvath hates all pre-professional pre students. <laughs> but despite that fact, prepares them well for graduate school. From what I've seen, he's a pretty cool guy. I like that. I heard you eat the souls of little children. <laughs> I've heard that Horvath's tests are impossible and that he's a really tough teacher, but hard work can produce an A. I think I've already provided information to support that statement. Before meeting Horvath, I was under the impression he was some raving lunatic. Spent most of his time trying to correct everything about chemistry that he felt was wrong, which was pretty much everything. He was out to make sure that as many people as possible failed his class and that he took pleasure in counting the number of F's and W's per semester. Keep in mind at UF we use E's, not F's. I heard many stories about Horvath, except... Oh, pardon me. I have not heard many stories, except that you are a very difficult teacher. However, my impression of you during the first class was that you are a crazy version of Willy Wonka. <laughs> except in love with chemistry instead of candy. Have you thought about moonlighting as an actor? I have to do this. I have to act. I have to command your attention. Because otherwise, you won't pay attention. If you don't pay attention, you can't learn. I've heard that Horvath is the Kaczynski of chemistry. How many remember this horrible person, Kaczynski? Well, this one goes on a little long. These are excerpts from the back side of the evaluation form that we used to use, but a couple of years ago discontinued using, or a year and a half ago, something like that, when evaluations went online. Number one, what personal qualities or teaching skills of this instructor contributed to the success of the course? <laughs> Comment, absolutely none. He's enthusiastic, enthusiastic about chemistry, but that only serves to make me feel more like an idiot. <laughs> Did any qualities or teaching practices of the instructor hinder the success of the course? Where do I start? He talks down to the class. He has tantrums in almost every class. His tests make you feel like a failure. And his bonus quizzes aren't even on Chemistry 2046, but on Chemistry 2210. 
That's not true, which you'll find out. You'll read about the bonus quizzes in the syllabus. And when I invent the first bonus quiz, which will be next week sometime, I'll tell you more about the bonus quizzes. What's your opinion of the course? No one can understand his notes. So you're forced to go to tutoring zone. He scares you away from going to his office hours because he expects too much. Add any other comments. I have not given a professor a bad rating yet, but this man is evil. Stay very far away unless you want to chew off all your nails every night and cry yourself to sleep. <laughs> this comes from 2010. You're going to have Horvath. Ooh. Now, I'm not allowed to say these four letter words, as descriptive as they may be. That was verbatim what I heard from both people I talked to. Mind you, both? That's two people. Okay. So the student goes on to say, so honestly, I'm pretty afraid of you, Dr. Horvath, and I might curse you with black magic at 3 a.m. when I'm unprepared for a test. Well, if you're unprepared, whose fault is that? But I will work as hard as possible to achieve the impossible A, and someday, when I'm a professor, I hope to be like you. Remember that, because no one will ever hear me say that again. So, one more. There are others, but we need to move on. What personal qualities are teaching skills? Contribute to the success of the course. He knows his stuff better than anyone else on the planet. Did any qualities or teaching practices of the instructor hinder the course? He does not realize that we do not know the material as well as he, as well as him, so he teaches much far above our level. That's what it says, teaches much far. <laughs> what is your opinion of this course, including printing materials? It is the hardest class I've ever taken. I study well over 10 hours a week, and I seek outside tutoring assistance, and I still perform poorly. And any other comments? When bad people die and go to hell, they end up in Horvath's lecture. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> now, as the information on the board, I believe, reminds you, we begin as, a, as an immediate pickup from what you did during your last lecture classes in Chemistry 2045, which were on kinetics. So, we start by reminding you that from a kinetic standpoint, from a rate standpoint, when for a given reaction system, the rate of the reaction proceeding in the forward direction, and the rate of the reaction for the same system proceeding in the reverse direction are equal, the system is in equilibrium. Important equilibrium, as I see it, is the most important thermodynamic property of any chemical reaction system. Because when a chemical reaction system comes to equilibrium, it stops. And if you're running a reaction which requires an 80% yield to make the amount of stuff which the boss has told you to make by this reaction, and this reaction shuts down at 40%. Because at 40% conversion of reactants to products, you've achieved equilibrium. You have a problem. You're going to lose half the starting materials. And you will have produced only half of the stuff you are required to produce. Which means, if by this reaction, you're going to succeed in producing the amount of stuff that the boss has told you to prepare. You need to learn how to fight and outwit equilibrium. And that's what we're going to be talking about in detail. Not just in chapter 17 where we introduce you to the fundamentals of equilibrium. But in chapters 18 and 19 and 20 and 21 and 22. Because, as we've said... 
Equilibrium is the most important thermodynamic property of any reaction system because under appropriate conditions each and every reaction system comes to equilibrium. Questions, before we talk about questions 17.1 and 17.2, on the first page of chapter 17, there's a glaring error. I want you to fix it. The error is in regard to this equilibrium reaction for hypothetical reactants and products. The equilibrium expression which I have typed in the notes is the inverse of the equilibrium expression that is correct. I'm working on rewriting the notes, but this is a time-consuming and difficult process. So I haven't gotten to that extent yet. Fortunately, there are few errors of this magnitude in the body proper of the notes. But here on page 17, one at the bottom, write the equilibrium constant expression like this for this reaction. This is correct. Now, question 17, one and 17, two. For some of you who don't have the notes, notice that I've got two flasks, each of which contain deionized water, about the same volume, it's about 400 mils in each flask. This flask is stoppered, this flask is not. Regarding then, these two flasks and their contents. This is what we said about rate forward, rate reverse being equal. So I wrote the rates for this equilibrium reaction when equilibrium is established. What I'm calling your attention to now is this. An equilibrium reaction with which you are all familiar. And as a process, left to right or right to left, you're familiar. Left to right, that statement is in, ref is in reference to water evaporating, and right to left, in reference to water condensing from the vapor phase to the liquid phase. In which of these vessels, unstoppered, stoppered, does that condition exist? Or does that condition exist in both vessels? Or does that condition not exist in either vessel? So, look at the possibilities again. This equilibrium, does it exist in this vessel only? Does it exist in this vessel only? Does it exist in both vessels? Does it exist in neither vessel? That's four possibilities. Now, during class, I always ask questions to try to stimulate your participation in our conversation. And I have a secret camera mounted to give me an audio-visual reproduction of what tra transpires during class. And after class, I review this recording. What do I look for? I look for those students who, when I ask these questions, don't participate. If you participate and you're right, that's wonderful. If you participate and you're wrong, that's okay. We're making progress because you are at least of a mind to participate. But if you don't participate, and I can identify you from this recording, you're the one I come after. Penalty number one, I want your damn Gator football tickets. <laughs> <laughs> and the penalties get worse. All right? That condition as exists in this flask, the open flask, but not that flask. Hand up if you vote yes. And no looking around except me. If there's any cheating in the politics of this election, I'm the one who's going to be responsible for it. 
That condition as exists in this flask, the stoppered flask only. That condition exists in both flasks. That condition exists in neither flask. I'm happy to say that the vast majority of you cast the correct vote. In this flask alone, that condition exists. Why? Don't tell me about the open system. Tell me why the condition exists in here. Because if it evaporates, there's no way for the evaporated water to get out. So it's remains constant. How would the weather folks refer to the air atmosphere above the liquid part of this system? Weather folks. How would they refer to this air atmosphere? More, more detailed information. Have you ever heard of 100% relative humidity? That's what exists up here. Now, why does that condition not exist here? Well, we've recognized that with this flask being open, as evaporation by water liquid takes place, the water vapor produced can escape. Now, is it possible that that condition could exist in this flask? Yes, it's possible. If we were to seal this room and turn off the air conditioning system, the air conditioning system serves two purposes. One, to keep the temperature at a level at which we critters are comfortable. That's usually about 72, 73 degrees. And two, to keep the air maintaining a concentration of water in the vapor phase of about 65%. Because about 65% relative humidity, we're comfortable. But if we turn off that system and seal this room, as time passes, because we perspire, we'd saturate this air atmosphere with water vapor. Then the condition of 100% relative humidity would exist. Then that equilibrium would exist in this open flask. And we'd be damned uncomfortable. Because we'd be sitting here stewing in our own juices. Because as we continued to perspire, there would no longer be any net evaporation of water liquid from our body surface. So, we get gooey. And that's not pleasant. Now, more on equilibrium. Let's use the deionized water we have in these flasks for this demonstration. Here I've got a bottle of reagent calcium chloride. Just for fun, any of you come to UF from the northern regions of our country? I was born and raised in Toledo, Ohio. The first time I came to Florida was March 1966. Went to the beach on summer break. Spring break, pardon me. Didn't take me long to say, I'm coming to Florida. I like it here. But in the north, this stuff is used to lower the melting point temperature of frozen water. You know, when the streets get icy and stuff like that. Well, let's not get on with that. Let me take some of this calcium chloride. Pretty good slug of it. Restopper this flask. So I can agitate thoroughly without spillage. And then in this flask, I'm going to put a different calcium compound, another one with which, actually with, with this one I expect you're more fam familiar than calcium chloride. This is calcium carbonate. You familiar with calcium carbonate? You know that calcium carbonate is the primary ingredient in eggshell? Oyster shells, teacher's favorite weapon, you know, this stuff called chalk. Let's put some calcium carbonate in this other flask. Just 
stopper shake. Notice that, or recognize that, in preparing each mixture. In this case, calcium chloride dissolved in water. In this case, calcium carbonate dissolved in water. In this case, would you agree if I say that all the calcium chloride dissolved? Yes. In this case, would you agree if I say that all the calcium carbonate assuredly did not dissolve? Because here we can observe the white powdery calcium carbonate remaining in contact with the liquid part of the system. Question, in which of these flasks does equilibrium exist between solute, that's the dissolved stuff, calcium chloride, calcium carbonate, in which of these flasks does equilibrium exist between solute and solution? You think about that, we'll pick it up from this point on Friday.